My name is Josh, and I'm going to speak about my robot lawyer, the potential for chatbots to do good, and the future, I think, of the legal profession. So there's been this huge hype around chatbots in the past year. Chatbots can do everything for us, from um, read us the news, to order us pizza, to help us chat with our favorite celebrities. But frankly, I've been disappointed. A lot of these chatbots are just marketing tools, really and don't help people do a lot more than what they could already do with mobile apps and websites. However, I have a lot of hope. Little known chatbots now help people, now help um, survivors of sexual assault anonymous, anonymously report perpetrators. They help victims of crimes contact the police when it's too dangerous to talk. And they um, help people in developing countries um, diagnose themselves with the Zika virus. So I think the best bots won't be ones that um, just order some pizza or um, get flowers to our house. They will be those that um, beat the bureaucracies that hold us back. In America, over 80% of those who need legal help can't afford it. People spend hours and hours of time at organizations like the DMV, wasting time and money that could be spent elsewhere. But why am I talking about this? Well. I got into this whole topic by accident. When I turned 18, the legal driving age in the UK, I was a terrible driver and began to receive a large number of parking tickets. <laughs> After about the fourth ticket, my parents told me I was on my own and had to pay for my own fines. But since I was a teenager and I couldn't afford these expensive tickets, I had to figure out other ways to get the tickets dismissed. I trawled through hundreds of pages of obscure government documents looking for the top reasons why parking tickets are generally cancelled. And after some initial success with my own fines, it quickly became obvious that I was the parking guru of my local area. It wasn't long before all my family and friends were asking for my help. But what became apparent is that rather than helping my friends and family individually, I should create um, a way to help them automatically. I was copying and pasting the same appeals over and over again, and I thought, why not apply this chatbot um, technology to create the world's first robot lawyer? I asked several um, parking ticket lawyers in London what they thought, and yes, there are parking ticket lawyers, apparently, of what they thought about the idea of this chatbot lawyer. Some were more polite than others, but every single one said it was silly and would never work. But thinking it would be a cool side project to show my friends, I decided to create it anyway and name the chatbot Do Not Pay. It works by finding a correct legal defense for your parking ticket. It asks you a few questions and goes down a decision tree to find a problem with the ticket. Once it knows the issue, it takes down a few details and then uses these details to, to generate a legally sound appeal, which it sends directly to the authorities. I really just created this during high school as a side project to impress my friends. But in just under six months, Do Not Pay took the legal world by storm. In, um, it, is, it has now appealed over 275,000 parking tickets, saving motorists over $7 million. Since I just created this, this as a side project, it all made me realize that the idea of automated legal services is bigger than just a few parking fines. I decided to expand to other areas of the law. I started by going after the airlines, and I have a video demo of that, what that looks like. So unlike a website or um, a typical mobile app, it can talk to you like a real human being. You can make general conversation with it. If, it, if you ask it how it is, it asks you how you are back. <laughs> and um, you can describe your legal issue in your own words. For example, the user here says, I was on a plane that was delayed. And um, so one of the first areas I decided to go, um, go for was going after the airlines. In Europe, if your flight is delayed by more than a few hours, you can claim hundreds of euros in compensation. But lawyers were charging huge commissions, often around 50% of the ticket, um, just to achieve this compensation. I thought that this was outrageous and added this functionality to my robot alongside parking tickets. What quickly became obvious, unfortunately, was that when, people, when you help people with parking tickets and flights, they assume that you can help them with everything. 
I began to receive a large number of messages um, about evictions and repossessions. I felt especially bad not being able to help people since I was just the parking ticket and flight expert and um, lots of people were unfortunately being made homeless. I later learned that in the UK we have this broken system. Instead of housing the homeless directly, the government will pay a lawyer huge sums of money to file an application which is then sent back to the government who pay the lawyer. This seemed like something that needed to be fixed. So to solve this problem, I actually figured out it was really simple to file this application using technology. I worked with Centerpoint, one of the largest homeless charities in the UK, to automatically allow my robot lawyer to claim government housing for people. It is completely free because unlike its human equivalent, it doesn't require a salary. From this experience, it's clear that so many areas of the law can be automated. My robot lawyer now works in over a dozen, half a dozen legal areas, including helping tenants fight their landlords and those with serious diseases like HIV understand their rights and responsibilities. It's really exciting to announce that in the past few weeks, I've expanded to help asylum seekers automatically claim refugee status in the US, UK, and Canada. The way it works is it first asks a few questions to see if a refugee is eligible for asylum under international law before taking down the details and auto-populating an entire application. It's really exciting to see where this technology will go, and I think that lawyers should be very worried. <laughs> but what does this all mean? The first main takeaway from this whole experience is that government is going to get a lot more efficient with the rise of technology. I'm just um, 20 years old working on my own, and I know that there are thousands more programmers with decades more experience than me working on similar issues. The UK government in particular is terrible at managing parking spaces and dealing with homelessness, but a chatbot lawyer has done a lot to, uh, to change that. In the future, technologies like chatbots will help the most vulnerable get help from the state. The second main takeaway is that technology is going to consume the legal profession. So many people are working on legal technology, and lawyers ultimately, in my opinion, are just charging hundreds of dollars an hour for copying and pasting documents. Obviously, there are some great lawyers who argue in court and work on things like human rights, but the majority of lawyers, I feel, are exploiting people, and technology can make the law free for everyone. So in summary, the, for chatbots to prosper, they have to do a lot more than order pizza. The best chatbots will be those that help humanity and beat the bureaucracies that hold us back. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions, I'd love to take your questions or parking ticket issues or anything. Are you developing any of this for the US? Yes, so um, for refugees, it works in the US. Um, it also works for parking tickets in New York City and Seattle. I'm expanding to the Bay Area very shortly, which is really exciting. So um, San Francisco will stop taking money from parking tickets very soon, I hope. So we just look up chat box as the... Chatbot lawyer, yeah, oh, or robot chatbot. lawyer, or do not pay. Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you so much for speaking today. I'm just curious, the service that you offer, it's a free service for your friends and family and anyone interested, but how do you, um, as like I guess a business owner or a founder, what, what do you get out of it? Like do you yeah. make business or on ads or how does it work for you well, in the I, business model? Yeah, I think the beauty of technology is that there's no variable cost. It doesn't matter how many people you're helping. Once you've got an app created, um, it can help a million people, and server costs aren't really that expensive. And so I'm very lucky. I can create all of this technology myself, so I've got no cost to recoup. I'm a student, so I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this amazing position where I can just do this completely for free. There's no advertising. It's free, and it really just helps people. So it's a pure public service, which is exciting. Wonderful. Thank you. And another question, if you don't mind. Um, for driveway violations um, and like appeals processes with that, have you thought of maybe doubling into that aspect? 
Absolutely. I, I've, this summer, I've got lots of exciting product announcements, and what, that's actually one of them. So speeding, uh, is that what you mean by driving? Uh, just like driveway, when, like when you block a driveway, because sometimes here in San Francisco, like if you're not parked all the way on the cem on the cement block, like yeah. if it dips, they'll get you on a driveway violation. Yeah. If you're not clearing the whole sidewalk. Yes, that's been a huge issue, and um, I don't think that deserves a $280 ticket. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it actually already works in the areas it works for for driveway violation parking tickets, mm -hmm. and also when it launches in San Francisco, it will help that because they don't even signpost anything and. <laughs> The whole thing is just a big scam, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for the presentation. Also, congratulations on persisting, even though the parking ticket lawyers didn't believe in you. Um, quick question about law firms and partnerships. And you said that um, lawyers should be worried. I agree they should be. Do you think there's maybe some sort of collaboration that you could do with a law firm, particularly those that offer a lot of pro bono? to ensure that it remains a public service, but then it also deepens the reach and also the scope of what you could do? Yeah, so I've been very fortunate. So many law firms have actually, and charities also helping me pro bono. I think that for AI in general, the best kind of applications will be those where humans and AI work together. I think about 30% of the law is just copying and pasting documents, and that's definitely all going to go to AI. But certainly to handle more complex cases, particularly with human rights, because um, a, a chatbot can't do everything, of course. So yeah, I definitely want to partner with lawyers in the future. My question is, what are the repercussions of breaking the law? So you were talking about driveway. Uh, if somebody blocks my driveway and I can't get my car out because of an emergency, yeah. uh, and then they're gonna go, they get a ticket, they get towed, they go to you, they get off. Aren't more people going to break the law? Aren't more people going to park in driveways and, and speed because they're getting off because of what the because they can go to this? Yeah, that's a great question and something I worry about myself. The thing is, though, um, I'm not looking to help people legitimately get out of legitimate parking tickets or legitimate crimes. But in the UK, for example, over 50% of all parking tickets that are appealed are overturned. And I think it just shows that there's this problem that exists across the world, that parking tickets are used almost as like a tax to fund things like the cigarette litter, when in fact cigarette taxes, taxes should fund uh, litter cleanup. So parking tickets um, is like a tax on the most vulnerable in society. I think so many, unfortunately, so many disabled people and pensioners make the most minor mistake in their parking and then get hit with a $280 parking ticket in San, Fran San Francisco. And often that's half of their pension weekly income, and then they can't afford food or heating for their house. So I think definitely it's something to consider, but are so many parking tickets, more than you would imagine, are issued unfairly, and that's what I'm fighting against. Yeah, first off, I love your idea, like, because, I mean, honestly, it is a huge problem that we have, like, where you just are charged, like, random tickets for, like, yeah. you know, whatever reason, but as far as, like, how do you go about tackling that, like, scalable problem, because you have different laws per different counties per different states, so, like, how are you, like, how do you approach, like, parsing, like, all those, like, documents and then, you know, bringing them into your butt, like, what's your approach to that? Yeah, the, um, unfortunately, the U.S., as you say, every ca county, city is different, um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. In the UK, it's one national set of laws. On the one hand, it's really annoying to have to kind of go back to the lawyers, create a new product, and that's why I've been expanding it city by city. But on the other hand, these cities are issuing so many unfair parking tickets. New York City, for example, issues $800 million a year of parking tickets. So the cities here are so big, never-ending, that just one city at a time gets you a lot of people. But it's really annoying, I agree. Totally, thank you. Um, I, I'd never even heard of chatbot before. Yeah. And so looking at the, the thing that you showed us, um, you go through this whole thing and then if, if the appeal goes through, it says print appeal. And then do I have to take that to a court? I have to, don't I have to deal with lawyers at some point? So um, it's worth mentioning, I should have said this at the beginning, a chatbot is basically an application that talks to you, 
big companies like Facebook and Microsoft and Amazon are investing huge amounts of money. And if you go into Facebook Messenger, there are so many chatbots available today. Um, so the way it works is it first gets down the details. It generates a document. And in some jurisdictions, it will actually send it off for you. So you don't have to do that printing process. In some, unfortunately, some areas are still in the dark ages where you do have to print it and mail it. But you definitely don't have to deal with a lawyer. All you have to do is put it in the mail. Just a quick question. So laws change, procedures change. How do you approach that in, in your chatbot, you know, change, making those changes? So um, this summer, I've actually got a really exciting announcement to do with that kind of issue. But for now, what I do is lots of lawyers advise me. Um, unfortunately, well, there are advantages and disadvantages to living in one great bureaucracy. The advantages are that nothing ever changes. Disadvantages are it's hard to get anything done. So. <laughs> If there is something that's going to change, they know, tell you months in advance, and it often requires so many people to agree. So luckily, nothing has changed. But ultimately, the rules there are there for a reason, to protect people. And hopefully, they won't change. Are you still doing this alone? Or do you have teams of people who are assisting you? I wish I had a team of people. I, I don't. I'm a student at Stanford. It's completely as a kind of social good side project to help people. I would ultimately like to get a team because I think that um, no great things can be done on your own. And so that's what I'm looking to do over the summer and hopefully make this from parking tickets to everything in the law. Not until the summer, but parking tickets at the moment. Um, so I think the first version of something is often in life never really works. And the company you're referring to is called Fixed. And the reason they, in my opinion, didn't work out is because they actually had a lawyer look over every single complaint. And you might say that that's a good thing because it helps <coughs> ensure that the complaints are better. But in reality, this meant that obviously that lawyer had to be paid. And so for every parking ticket, they were charging people $40 just to appeal the ticket. My approach is to use artificial intelligence and document automation so that it's completely automated and free to produce. In that case, um, it doesn't matter how many people use it. It's the same amount of money that's being spent on the service. So our model is kind of completely different. Although they were the first to tackle parking tickets and they're my comrades in that, we have a very different approach to how we're solving um, legal technology. Um, I have one <laughs> over here. Um, with developments in AI and, and chatbots and just AI in general, in your kind of wildest yet attainable dreams, how do you see this? Like, what would be your ideal goal in five, six, ten years from now? Yeah. So um, it's worth mentioning that my uh, technology is powered by something called IBM Watson, which is a really powerful AI engine um, produced by IBM. And that means that people, ordinary people without PhDs in machine learning can create really powerful artificial intelligence applications. So in a few years, I would ultimately love it if you could just type in your legal issue and it just gets done for you using the technology. And that would ultimately level the playing field so that any citizen, whether you're a regular citizen or a billionaire or a politician or whoever, you can get the same standard of legal representation. Because at the moment, it's kind of a pay-to-play system. And I think if technology can stop that, then it would be incredible. I'm very lucky to be getting all these um, questions. Thank you. Um, do you envision in the future, I mean, in the future, near or far away, a world without judges? Yes. So. I'm really split about this because on the, other, on the one hand, judges, judges um, it's proven that they show a huge amount of bias, whether it's economic bias, racial bias. And even in Bloomberg in the past few weeks, there was this great article that came out that said that a change in daylight savings times leads to harsher sentences for thousands of people. So on the one, on the one hand, technology algorithms do have bias. But 
less so than a human because humans are very flawed. On the other, the law has a lot of compassion. I think that setting bail, for example, is not a strict um, kind of rule set. You have to take into account an individual person's circumstances, prior convictions, things like that. I think that AI is really developing at a fast rate and it will get to that point where it can kind of show that level of compassion, but it will be a significantly, significantly longer time. And I think if we introduce the technology too early, it will lead to unfair, unfairness in um, kind of judging. Unfortunately, judges actually do use a lot of technology at the moment. And um, I recommend this article, it's from the New York Times just a few days ago, maybe a week ago, that said that AI was leading to bad sentencing and judging. And so I think the potential is there, but um, ultimately, until the technology is right, you know, people's lives are at stake, so it's important to be careful. Hi, actually you sort of spoke about it. Um, can you talk a little bit about how courts are using AI for sentencing? Sure, so, um, co so uh, basically judges uh, receive a recommended, in a lot of places, there's this pr proprietary technology developed by this company. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what's inside the algorithm. And yet, um, for a large percentage of cases, judges receive this report saying, based on the prior circumstances and conditions of the case, uh, we recommend that you should have um, a sentence of X years or a sentence of X uh, months of community service. And that's very problematic because the company is a private company developing this technology, and they're not accountable to anyone. When, when we make laws, you know, politicians, it's a completely open process where we can at least see what, what's being proposed, how the laws are applied. With a private company, it's their very incentive to protect their invention because they don't want other companies copying it. So we don't actually know what's in this like, sentencing recommendation algorithm. And so in a lot of places, it's being used to recommend sentencing. Um, in much more benign areas in the courts, I think it's good that a lot of courts are going digital. It means that people can file their claims online and things like do not pay can exist on, as a layer on top of that. But um, yeah, no, sentencing recommendation is the biggest area that I'm concerned with. Hi, um, so I uh, recently have been doing a lot of research um, for new health insurance plans and I've encountered a chatbot or two. Um, and with things like that where I don't have a lot of experience or knowledge with um, some of the verbiage used in documents and things like that, um, I kind of need to ask further questions and I found that the chatbots fail in that regard. So I was wondering what you're doing in terms of maybe just using other synonyms and things like that to cross language barriers or just basic um, knowledge barriers. Yeah, so I think in that sense, it can be, chatbots can be a blessing and a curse. I think chatbots are really good because they help translate what human, I, I, I once had a website version of Do Not Pay where people click on links and that gets them to their legal issue the same way a chatbot would. And what I would find is people would have a legal defense for their parking ticket. The defense would be listed on the website, but they just wouldn't click it. They would just think that their, their, their defense is like slightly more special and, it doesn't, and what's listed doesn't apply to them. So a chatbot can help translate human input into the legally correct input. And in a lot of these government forms where a chatbot isn't present, for example, asylum forms, the language is just incomprehensible. And for example, in the, U in the UK asylum form, for example, it says, does the Convention Against Torture apply to you? And unfortunately, nobody really, if you're just a standard asylum seeker, you probably wouldn't know what the Convention Against Torture is. My chatbot, on the other hand, for the same question, kind of asks the same thing, but in like a legal, uh, legally sound way, but also in an understandable way. It says, do you fear torture in your home country? And so chatbots can be used to like translate everything on the forms into something that's correct. And users can ask questions and the chatbot can respond if it has a programmed way to do so. On the other hand, I think that obviously reduces the need for lawyers who help a lot of people one on one. And ideally, if, you're ha if you have legal problems, you should seek a lawyer because lawyers will give you the best. The technology isn't there to help you with all legal issues better than lawyers. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of people can't afford lawyers, so a chatbot is kind of the next best thing and making it understandable. I have a question. 
Yeah. Sorry. I know I know a couple lawyers, so I'm I'm curious if you could say more about how they've reacted to hearing about this product. Yeah. What what sorts of have reactions have you had from the legal community? Well, l the first thing they tried to do, um, like in the earlier question, was they tried to buy the website, and when that failed for them, they they felt very threatened. Lawyers are kind of pretending to be in this industry that nobody understands. They say nobody really understands the law. Only we can help um, help you understand it. But in reality, for anyone who's ever done any sort of kind of work, legal work themselves and defending themselves, it's not that complicated. And so lawyers are, fe are feeling very threatened because they're charging hundreds of dollars and all they're doing is really just copying and pasting documents. There are only like... For example, if you're having a fight with your insurance company, how many possibilities can there be that you're having a fight over? Either maybe they're like underpaying you for your claim or um, they're overcharging you with another claim or something like that. And so in reality, the possibilities aren't that um, kind of great and lawyers are feeling very threatened. There are a lot of good lawyers out there who are helping me out, who believe in access to justice and who do a lot of good work so aren't feeling threatened. but. I think in the next few years, lawyers are one of the most vulnerable professions to be automated by technology, alongside accountants and other things. I got you. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned about uh, documentation automation uh, yeah. by using the chatbot. Then I work for a small international trading company. We have a lot of documentation and uh, uh, procedures to uh, follow. And something is like like you uh, protest uh, a driving ticket. Yeah. It, it's same, just uh, uh, go through the procedure, produce lots of documentation, then get the job done. Is there any way I can use the, the uh, artificial intelligence or chatbot to streamline my work in a small business? Definitely. I think um, legal operations is something that really is also going to be hit. I don't do it because I'm, I like to help normal people with their everyday problems. But for example, there's a startup called Robot Lawyer Lisa, and they actually do a lot with non-disclosure agreements, all sorts of business stuff, and so I would recommend them. And um, Or you could create your own technology. I mentioned earlier IBM Watson. It, you don't have to have a kind of PhD in machine learning to do this sort of stuff with things like Watson. So if you wanted to create your own, that's another possibility. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you.